brought to you by Geico. On a beautiful night in Logan, Texas, we welcome you inside Maverick Stadium. Mountain West Conference opener for both Utah State and Air Force. Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott. Whiteout conditions, the herd has been rocking. The Utah State student section, a factor in our first half. And a touchback as Air Force will get it first and 10 from their 25. Entertaining first 30 minutes in the books and the stats about what you would expect. Air Force loves to run it. They put up a buck 62. Utah State, a nice balance, but Jordan Love, he's halfway home to five hundo by the time it's all said and done. He's been impressive. Well, he has been, and he distributed the ball all over the place in the first half, but 250 yards passing is very impressive. Not so much for Jordan Love, though, but I think, Roy, more importantly, the command of the offense that he showed in the first half, and then the length of their scoring drives off the clock, really, everything was under a minute. Fagan on first down, upended after a pickup of four. Air Force running its triple option. One and one coming into this game. Off an early open date after a close loss at Florida Atlantic. Isaiah Sanders making the start. Second time he's done that against Utah State. And he'll fling it complete for a gain of five. Marcus Bennett, his second catch, third and short coming up. And one of the things we found out about Isaiah Sanders in the first half was that he could throw the ball too. He's got a strong arm. He can roll right, roll left. He was 4-7 in the first half, 65 yards, and then that nice completion as well. Just enough to keep the defense honest on third and short. I don't think he got there. And I, I think if you're Air Force, I, I don't know if you go for it here on fourth down and risk giving Utah State the ball deep in the turret territory. But, you know, then again, Roy, what do I know? Suli to my Vena with the stop, fourth down. Falcons going for it, Sanders again. Close. First down, Air Force. And Matt Wells is still standing over on the sideline. He, he just wasn't convinced that Air Force got it. He just wasn't convinced they got the first down. Needed to reach the 35, it did by half an inch. Matt Wells, year number six, trying to get the Aggies back to a bowl game. Cleveland, Rockamore, down he goes. John Trell Rockamore for a loss of five. Isaiah Sanders was so good in the first half, I mentioned, as he pushed the corner and then flipped it with his left hand. That time the ball was behind Cleveland, and anytime there's even a slight error in the Air Force option, it, it just disintegrates. It really does. The timing is so important, and, and, and where the pitch is in relation for, from the quarterback to the pitch man is just imperative that it's right on the mark, and it wasn't. Ball was tipped, crossing the line, looking for Gerard Sanders. Naliai making his presence felt once again. And, and Naliai that time was dropping as a pass defender in coverage, and he was able to time the jump up and swat the ball out of the air. Just another great play by him. Remember, he had a blocked field goal in the first half as well. Tipa Naliai, the transfer from Texas Christian. Ted and White having a good night. Falcons 7 to 14 on third down, and that one nowhere close. Not the kind of possession you want to start the second half. No, no, and I think each team, you know, went in at halftime. They, they put some things on the board. Keith Patterson that time, the defensive coordinator, had some answers for Troy Calhoun's Falcons that time on the first series. And then we talked with Keith Patterson this week. He had a lot of confidence with the scheme he wanted to put in play tonight. Question is, could the players execute it? So far, they've done pretty well. Well, they've, they've put more guys near the line of scrimmage. And they knew, looking from last year's film, Roy, they just didn't have enough people at the line of scrimmage to make tackles. And, Air Force didn't have any huge gains a year ago. 
but they had consistent seven, eight, nine yard gains, and you just gotta put more people in the box, which they've done tonight. Scott to Jordan Nathan. Lost the handle for a moment. After a 45-yard punt, it'll be first and 10 for the Aggies. And, and not an easy catch by Nathan that time. Balls in the air, wind swirling. Utah State up 21-14. The college football playoff lives on ESPN. Back in Logan, Utah, Tom Ramsey, Roy Felpi. We'll get it right. <laughs> Mad respect for the Beehive State on a late night in a Wild West shootout in the Mountain West. 21-14, Aggies football. Vaughn's tripped up short of the 25. You know, Utah State's been impressive tonight, as expected. Air Force with an opportunity, and Falcons need the defense to stand tall here. Third and long. And, and Roy, what's you know what's interesting here, do you, if you're Utah State, do you slow it down a little bit? Do, do you start using the clock to your advantage in the first half? They're, they're three touchdown drives, minute 34, 44 seconds, 26 seconds. They got 21 points out of it. How fast do you want to go in the second half? But you still got to get first downs because you know Air Force is going to get a bunch in the second half. But right now, this is exactly what Air Force wanted him to do was face a long third down situation. See the Falcons dial up pressure, four-man pressure. Tarver across the middle. The 6'3", 215-pound senior. You told me driving in today, they're not going to have an answer for number one in white. And so far tonight, they haven't. No, they, they haven't, and they found out last year in the fourth quarter when Tarver had four catches for 86 yards, no one could stop him. Darwin Thompson, a nifty move. Now this is where well, they'll turn up tempo here. They'll start getting after it once they hit the 50-yard line and start working into plus territory. RPO. And how about Jordan Love? A little shake, a little bank for the first down. Jordan Love is really an athletic guy. He's big, 6'4", 225. I mean, that's that's an NFL prototype body there. And I don't know about swinging the ball around, but. More tempo, deep ball to Tarver. Nine catches, 128 yards tonight for Equavian Tarver. It was covered by Trey Bug. It'll be second and 10. Quavian in the first half, eight for 112. Love takes a shot as he gets rid of the ball. Jordan Jackson applying the pressure. They just have they just can't get a lot of sacks. They just have it. Ten all of last year. Air Force did. You just gotta be able to put pressure on the quarterback. On the shotgun again, Love. Passes low, corralled by Jordan Nathan, upended and driven out inside the 30. It's a gain of 14, that'll move the chains. Wind starting to pick up here in Logan. The first day of fall, Utah State trying to protect its home turf. And Thompson inside the 25. Aggies, Tom, their last 40 games here, 31 and 9. So the home field advantage has been strong for head coach Matt Wells. Yeah, Matt Wells, you know, is one of 22 head coaches in the country. He and Troy Calhoun both coaching at their alma mater. Tompkins with a reception. Fedula with a stop. Gain of six. And another first down for Utah State. Now, Matt Wells knows when David Yost came on board how important it was. Oh, wide open. Wide open. The tight end was there, Carson Terrell. It'll be first and goal for Utah State on the bus by the Air Force secondary. Boy, Terrell's another big body tight end. They like their two tight ends, Dax Raymond and Carson Terrell. Two really good-looking tight ends. More tempo. 
Thompson reaching, touchdown! Now the second effort got him across the goal line, it was close. That time they took a ton of time on that drive, covered 77 yards, all of two minutes and 51 seconds. Jordan Love now over 300 yards passing. And in control of the Aggies offense. eberly has been perfect in his Utah State career on the extra point attempts. And the top kickers, not only in the Mountain West, but in the country. And Utah State doubling up Air Force. Well, Jordan Love going over 300 yards. And, you know, it also helps when you got good tight ends. And Love to Carson Terrell down inside the five. And then they're able to punch it across going up 28-14. ESPN College Football, brought to you by Dickies Flex, superior comfort guarantee. Learn more at dickies.com and Audi. Back inside Maverick Stadium, 28-14. Six minutes into our third quarter, Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott, Utah State out in front of Air Force. And speaking of the Falcons, Arian Worthman getting loose on the sidelines. Set out the last game for the Falcons at Fort Atlantic with a rib injury. And we'll see if Troy Calhoun elects to change things up. And it looks like he will. Hey, to see the numbers on Worthman, 5'11", 210. Played a little baseball in high school, has five relatives that have played professional sports, so the bloodlines are there. Now that he's healthy, he'll try to give Air Force a change of pace. Started 10 games a year ago. On the option to give to the fullback, Fagan ahead for a couple. And I loved what I loved what Troy Calhoun told us yesterday about his quarterbacks, both of them, both Sanders and Worthman, their leadership ability and their leadership skills and the combination of humility, work ethic, competitiveness, he feels totally confident with either one in the game. And I thought that that's a real credit to both those young men to have that kind of confidence by their head coach. Fumble on the exchange. Utah State has recovered. Gage Ferguson hopped on top of it in an Air Force turnover. Utah State in business. Well, Utah State's one of the top opportunistic defenses in the country. They entered the game ranked ninth in the NCAA with nine forced turnovers. And Roy Wright here, they're able to punch it out. Just a missed exchange, quarterback, fullback, and I'm not sure it looked like Worthman just, he wanted to pull it. And anyway, falls on the ground, and Utah State again capitalizing on an error by the other team. Do you feel like Air Force needed a spark at this point because they had those two scoring drives in the first half? Things had bogged down recently. They'll set up the middle screen for the tight end. There goes Dax Raymond. Touchdown at Utah State, and check it, it's Taylor Compton. And Compton, the sophomore from right here in Logan for 39 yards. I know one thing. He's fast. 
And it was Raymond with a grab, the catch and run. A little catch and dash. What a great play call, though. You know, you end up setting up a little, little slow screen, and it's to your, your H or tight end. He's attached to the formation. Comes off love in the air, and then it's Dax Raymond to the house for Utah State. Five fourteen, Utah State out in front of Air Force. Eight fifteen remaining in our third quarter. The winds have picked up. And some assistance required for this kickoff. Aggies on fire offensively. First time in school history, Utah State has scored more than thirty points in their first four games. Eberly, Win will bat that one down inside the one. Cleveland. Far side with a lane and tripped up short of the 25. Well, Dax Raymond, a nice job on a well-executed play that last time, Tom. And, and it's how they set it up, too, Roy. You're going to see Dax Raymond. He's on the end of the line of scrimmage. It's really kind of a blocker there, but they run motion out, and all of a sudden there's a little shoulder move by Love, and then he jumps over the line and tosses it to Dax Raymond. We know one thing. The redshirt junior from Tip View High here in Utah, he can run because he scooted to the end zone and showed his speed. And, you know, he's a 250-pound guy motoring. Worthman, the quarterback for Air Force. will take his time on the option near side to the 30. And now, more than anything, Air Force needs a nice drive. They need to just be patient, get first downs. They really don't need to be in a hurry, but they got to be able to generate first downs and some push here at the line of scrimmage and get their offense untracked. Both quarterbacks healthy for the Falcons. Worthman played in the season opening shutout against Stony Brook. Four on the play clock. Rimsburg, edge, first down. And gang tackle, crossing the 40 after a gain of nine. Rockamore was there. Now, Kate Rimsburg had, had a lot of carries. You mentioned one carry coming into this game. Runs a little high. You're going to see at the end of the play, boy, he takes a shot. He just got to lower his pad level a little bit because he got rocked. Five-man front for Utah State. They'll reverse it to Cleveland. He high steps his way to the 44. DJ Williams with a stop. Short pickup. Yeah, I like it. I like the reverse. I like a nicely designed reverse near midfield. It worked a year ago in their game against Utah State. Flow starts going one way, but Utah State did a nice job on the backside that time. If you're just tuning in, a wild day of college football. The top three teams won. Rockamore, another sack. Army nearly upset Oklahoma in Norman. Took the Sooners to overtime. That's a loss of three. Maybe the biggest upset of the day, Virginia Tech losing by two touchdowns at Old Dominion. Who? The Monarchs from Conference USA, Tom. How about that? Falcons 7 of 15 on third down. They need eight yards here to keep the drive alive. Nine in the box for Air Force. Worthman pressured. Flings it complete. Gerard Sanders. The strong move near midfield. That may be enough. Gerard Sanders. Well, that's a, that's a heck of a throw by Worthman because he eludes a defender, an unblocked defender coming right up the A-gap, and then he sidesteps him and fires a laser to Saunders along the sideline. Sanders did a great job extending the ball for the first down. Worthman bottled up, no gain. Wow. Well, Worthman can make, make plays. They feel really confident with him. He 
dropped a little weight in the offseason, came in in really fine shape in the fall camp, and he's a guy who's taken a lot of snaps for the Falcons. Conference opener for both Air Force and Utah State. Aggies trailed 14 to 7. Since then, have turned it on. Worthman flushed, picks up a block. Third down coming up. Air Force on the night. Third down conversions, 8 to 16 on third down. They've gone for it a couple times on fourth down. They've been two for two on the night on fourth down, but this is a challenging third down at midfield because you're almost relegated to throw the ball here. And they got three wide outs and they line it up in eye backs. Waggis packed the tight end at the bottom of your screen. Cross the middle. Pass will be caught. That'll move the chains. A gain Bennett. of 14 yards. Yeah, Marcus Bennett. I liked him a year ago. We had a couple Falcons games. I thought Marcus Bennett was a really explosive player. He run good route runner. Gets across the formation. And again, Worthman with a spot on throw for a first. Bennett was a long jump champion back in Cobb County, Georgia. Ran track in high school. As Christy Anson makes the stop. After a gain of four. Well, again, the importance of this drive, knowing, and I think here's why it becomes even more vital, because Utah State can score so quick. You have got to generate points on your drives. High formation for the Falcons. Rimsburg gets to the edge. Flashes the speed inside the 20. That's a first down. Yeah, he can flash. He does that. He's quick. He is quick. Boy, he gets it, takes it out of the eye, and then just bounces it, stays on his fullback's hip, and almost runs past it. Nice job of finishing the run. And after a gain of 12, Ramsburg lost the handle. Aggies think they have it. No signal yet, and Air Force retains possession. I don't know how they retain possession. You and I both saw the ball pop up in the air. And again, I don't know if it's the exchange. Time out for an injured player. Yeah, Rensburg never had the handle on the ball, but credit him. He went dive and nose first back in the pile to get it and wrestled it away at the bottom of the pile. Last fumble, it felt like that was on Worthman. That one, Remsburg just never quite corralled it after what looked to be a clean exchange. Remsburg already with 60 yards tonight. All of those on the ground for the sophomore from Kansas as Anderson has helped off the field for the second time. Air Force. The pitch to Erickson, and the Falcons fortunate. Worthman used both hands to get the football his direction. It looked awkward. Air Force is a little bit sloppy here the last several plays. and yeah, I don't know if that ball might have got tipped even coming out of Worthman's hands. No, it wasn't. It's like a basketball pass. Nolly eye right there, putting the pressure on Worthman, though. Third down. Here's Worthman, fakes the pitch, upended at the 15. It's a gain of two. Decision time for Troy Calhoun. It looks like he's going to send on the field goal team. Tom, Tom Ivena, Tom Ivena was in there. Suli Tom Ivena playing with a club on his hand. That was a nice play by him. And a new kicker for the Falcons, this attempt from 31 yards. And that one splits the uprights. So Conkey connects. 
35-17, our new score. Less than three to go in the third. Back in Logan, Utah. And ESPN recognizing extra yard for Teachers Week, a week-long celebration of teachers led by the College Football Playoff Foundation through its Extra Yard for Teachers platform in Utah State. Distributing over 200 tickets to local teachers to show their support for this effort. Visit the College Football Playoff Foundation website at www.cfp-foundation.org to learn more about Extra Yard for Teachers Week and how you can also get involved. And a great gesture honoring and celebrating those that instruct our youth in this great country. 35-17, our score, Tom Ramsey, Roy Philpott, and Tom, Utah State will take over first and 10 from his 25. We talked with Chucky Keaton, the graduate assistant and Utah State legend earlier today. You see him right there, former quarterback. And tell you what, he's got a lot of teachers and a lot of mentors that have meant a lot to him in his life. Yeah, he, he is, when you look up Utah State Aggie, he really exemplifies a lot of things. I asked him before the game, I said, hey, who was your teacher? Who was your mentor? You know, we do a little piece on uh, on ESPN. He said, you know, two guys, two two mentors in particular, Jovan Bonite, receivers coach for the Aggies, and Matt Wells, the head coach, who Matt Wells was his position coach as a quarterback and then became his head coach. Jordan Love, Scarver, another drop, his second tonight. Well, Savon Scarver want to bury this film. Matt Wells can't believe it. Well, well, Chucky Keaton, I mean, Utah State royalty, and Matt Wells was very frank with us. He is a budding coaching star. It's only a matter of time. Yeah, yeah. Ch Chucky, Chucky Keaton's a special, special guy. Jordan Nathan with a Utah State first down and a flag far side near the 24-yard line. We'll check the penalty. Yeah, I think it goes back to what Matt Wells told us, too. You know, his program, he said, you know, we have a developmental program. Only. Offense, number 21, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, still second down. And, and I had to follow it up with Coach. I just want to make sure. You call it a developmental program. He said, yes. He goes, listen, you know, we're not going to get a, we're not going to get a power five guy. We're not going to get the guy who has 12 or 20 offers in the power five. We're a group of five school. We have to coach them, develop them, and let them play. And it goes to strength and conditioning. It goes to nutrition. It goes to you know, doing the right thing academically on and off the field. And Matt Wells has got a good thing going. Well, a couple penalties here against the Aggies. All start. Offense, number 52. That's a five-yard penalty. It's still second down. So it was Jalen Green with the hole, and then Sean Taylor with the early movement. Utah State bringing back all five starters on the offensive line, plus big Alfred Edwards over at left tackle. He's been a standout recruit sign for the Aggies. Play action, Love, and Green dropped that one. Well, Robert Bullard in coverage. Third down and long coming up, and Air Force now with a golden opportunity. Yeah, that, that ball came in hot. Without question, that, that one was hot off Love's arm. Utah State tonight, three of six on third down. This is a very long yardage. Third and 25. He'll set up the screen. Bright makes one man miss. And we'll get close to the original line of scrimmage. Fafita with the hit. Three and out for the Utah State offense and a big stop, a stand, if you will, for Air Force. Well, you know, the hold set them back and then they run slow screen and at least, at least get a nice gain of 15 yards or 14 yards, get it back close to the line of scrimmage, as you mentioned, but it gives their punter at least some room to drive the ball. And again, Air Force has been good on special teams. Remember, they've blocked a few this year. Blocked one at FAU. Taylor Heinze with a 55-yard putt, and that'll pin Air Force back inside its own 25. Well, you saw Garrett Coppola there moments ago, 22 in blue, and it's been an emotional year 
for the Air Force safety. His older brother, Kyle, suffered a terrible motorcycle accident back on September 17th of last year. A day later, Kyle also suffered a stroke. Lost feeling in the right side of his body. You see the two growing up. Garrett wanted to leave the academy to go be with his brother. Decided not to, and then the next week broke his collarbone against San Diego State. So he took that as a sign to move back home. He took Kyle to rehab really every single day for three straight months. And the good news is Kyle Coppola getting better, feeling better this year. And Garrett's back at the academy doing what he does best. Uh, thoughts and prayers with him and his family and his continued recovery. And a first down carry by Worthman. As the ball will be ruled down at the 38. That's a gain of 14. Timeout for an injured player. Logan Lee, 47 in white for Utah State, banged up on the play. Well, Sunday night baseball and a special time this week, 7 Eastern tomorrow night. You can see this matchup in October as well. The Red Sox and the Indians from Progressive Field. All-stars up and down both lineups. Coverage begins 6 o'clock Eastern on ESPN2 with baseball tonight. Sunday night countdown and both streaming live on the ESPN app. Well, the Red Sox How have about been those Red Sox? incredible they, this year. They already, they already broke open the champagne, Phil. Well, they haven't even needed Pedroia, which is amazing. I mean, you got Mookie Betts, you got David Price, you got Sale. So many weapons. And the Astros are going to have something to say about it. Maybe the Yankees. Aaron Judge is healthy again. Aroldis Chapman is now back on the back end of that bullpen okay. in the Bronx. All right. The playoffs this year, Major League Baseball. That'll be good. Maybe the best yeah. ever. I'm just telling you. I can feel it. Matt Wells <laughs> wants a turnover. I don't believe he's going to get it. No. He, he can argue. And they're looking at the video board. Trying to make their case. The ruling on the previous play that the runner was down by rule prior to the ball coming loose is under further review. Mark Marsden, our replay official tonight. It's got to be indisputable video evidence. Let's have a look. And I think what gets people excited on a video board sometimes doesn't necessarily mean that's the feed <laughs> coming into the, the replay office, but I, I thought he was on the ground when the ball came loose. I thought he landed. Take a look from the end zone camera. Can't really tell. I mean, I mean, there that was a collision. The call on the field, very important here. Well, the ball might, the might, ball might have come out. It sure did. It. That's a great angle right there. That's kind of a. Is his knee down? One of our upper cameras see the ball. But but is he on the ground with possession? That, that's that's what you cannot see there. Is his knee down there? I don't know. Can't see his knee. Again, the call on the field critical. Logan Lee, even though he was hurt on the play, I think he was the one that, that punched the ball out if it did come out. thought I saw his arm in there. A bang, bang play on what could be the second turnover of the night for Air Force. Falcons have held on to momentum here these last five or six minutes. As the contact occurs, Worthman reaches in with a second hand to try to stabilize it. And at that point, the knee is awfully close to the ground. It appears as though... That's a fumble. It, it appears as though... But, but Roy, you know, it was his knee down a split second prior to the ball coming out. That That's... I just can't clearly see where his knee is on the ground. We'll find out here, though, quickly.
Now this replay of the utmost importance in it's a situation you don't mind them taking their time. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down at the 38 yard line. Was not confirmed. Stands. Not enough video evidence to overturn the call. Well, it has to be indisputable video evidence. And, and you know, what you see again, what the fans see sometimes on a handheld at the, at the venue, I mean, it, yeah, it looks like maybe, but looks like maybe isn't going to get it overruled. Big call at the end of our third quarter. And Fagan barrels his way ahead as Isaiah Sanders checks back in. Well, there were problems with the exchange on the handoff on two occasions with Worthman in the game tonight. And so Sanders, who started this evening and played the first two quarters, back and under center. Inside give, third and two upcoming. And, and one, of, one of the areas I thought Sanders gave them a little more Maybe benefit having him in the game versus Worthman is the ability to run bootleg and come on the out the backside from play action. And so it at least allows him to come across a formation and get him out in space with a run pass option. Nine in the box for Utah State. Here comes the option. Sanders needed two. He got He'll one. Get one. Yeah. He what could be the final play of our third quarter. Utah State's defense is, they're getting stout. They're seeing it well. The eye discipline is good. Falcons will go for it. Sanders pushed in front. Ahead of the 49, that'll move the sticks. Well, Air Force has rolled the dice on fourth down three times tonight. Yeah, three for three on all four. That's the end of the third quarter. Three complete here in Logan. 35-17 the score. And Air Force coming in as a double-digit underdog, hanging around with possession in front of a packed house inside Maverick Stadium. Fourth quarter coming up. 15 to go in the Mountain West Conference opener for both teams.